Hello and welcome everyone. This is Melissa from Endo Empowered and I'm very excited to share Chris with you today. He has got amazing knowledge all around endometriosis. Tell us how long have you been in the industry of working with women with endometriosis? Um, started in 1997 and really um, started working with endometriosis about um, a year later. Um, I came through abuse myself so I had irritable bowel syndrome. Um, which is sort of what the male equivalent is and um, going through treatment for that myself what I found was that um, I then attracted a whole lot of women with irritable bowel and then from there a whole lot of women with endometriosis and when I found the two together and they seem to be together quite a lot um, I became really quite interested in it. Mm. So tell us what do you do? What is your sort of line of work? Okay, so I'm a, a deep tissue therapist. I work specifically working in the deep parts of the body. So uh, so it's kind of like a massage? Yeah, I'm, I'm qualified as a deep tissue massage therapist, but um, I do a lot more than that. And I work in particularly an area called fascial kinetics. Mm -hmm. um, there are some countries in the world where fascial kinetics is, is a government supported, government sp uh, funded treatment. Um, it's not in New Zealand, unfortunately. Um, but fascial kinetics works with your myofascia and it basically is your go-to stuff for any injury. Okay. Can you explain that a little bit more? So what is myofascial? What is it exactly in the body? What does it do? Okay, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, as you age, it's the hardening agent in your eyes. Um, if you get a, a cut that heals up, myofascia is the glue that glues with collagen to bind that together. Um, but it's also the tough stuff on the outside of your muscles. So if you took a chicken leg um, and you stripped the skin off, all the muscles are held in shape in little bags. Those bags are made of myofascia and they're glued into the bone with myofascia as well. And um, it's a gel, so it can be anywhere from fully liquid and runny like jelly on the stove to fully hard like jelly in the refrigerator you forgot about it three weeks ago and now you can't get a knife into it to get it so out. So is that kind of the stuff you get when you make bone broth? Um, it's one of the materials you get. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it does liquefy with heat. Okay. So when we first met, um, you, you know, sort of stressed to me that I should completely avoid any kind of extreme heat, hot water bottles, hot showers, incredibly hot baths. And, you know, this was new news to me because, you know, having had endometriosis for many, many years, this was my go-to method of trying to ease my pain. Uh, I know a lot of women use um, hot water bottles on a daily basis to try and alleviate that pain. And obviously, now that I've found out this information, it's really important that we share your knowledge about why you yeah. don't recommend them. Okay, so, so you need to know a little bit about fascia. Um, it's full of what's called mechanosensors, so they, it's sensitive to movement, okay? Um, and they can also act as pain receptors as well. And when you go to, as you called it, a hottie and put it on your tummy, that nice shape around the six pack, that nice flat pad that the six pads sit on when somebody's got a nice flat tummy and the muscles are all there, it is actually made of myofascia. Okay. So when you cook it up, which is what you're actually doing, you're actually heating up the fascia and you're hyper stimulating and until it goes numb essentially as well as that you're heating the fascia up and it goes liquid and that gives you a sensation of more movement so you feel like so that I can might move. ease the pain as well so it initially will you've ease dulled the pain. it yeah and you've made it more runny okay okay so it's now instead of being rock hard because my fascia is hard enough to tear bones apart it'll withstand um 2000 psi or if you do it in the the um metric method it's 141 kilograms per square centimeter of pressure mm -hmm. it's really really super tough and once it binds with collagen which it does to form every single scar on your body once it does that it's got 10 times the tensile strength of steel so if you loosen it up those things all start to move around so your contractures if you have them um, and most women with endo end up with some form of contracture um, those loosen off for you momentarily mm -hmm. 
but then what happens is when it cools down, it sets, and when it sets, it sets with 2,000 psi of pressure, and, and now it sets you're, harder. And it sets harder. Yeah, yeah. If you kind of imagine so making... So it's almost like an addiction that you, you, yeah. you want to put the heat on because it eases it, but then it gets worse, so then, you know, and you're just on this constant cycle. Absolutely. And so you, how does this relate to adhesions, or does it not relate at all? It relates totally, mm. because what happens is if you're liquefying the fascia and it's, say, for example, we see a lot of, uh, because we work in chronic conditions, okay, so we work after everything else has failed, that's our normal stuff. So we see a lot of endo because they take up to nine years to diagnose. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of them have had surgeries where they've had uh, a drain put in. Well, we can actually find where that drain is, the shape of it, the length of it, into mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. So we're going through the peritoneal wall or the wall of the stomach and we can find that whole drain mm -hmm. and we can literally it will be hard and rigid. Well, when you heat that up, the outer shell of that will go softer, but it won't dissolve because you haven't treated it, you haven't mm. released it, mm. okay? Mm. And it's still attached to the surface up here of the tummy, so it's still stuck there. Yeah. What you need to do is get those to release. Heat is only going to dull it in the short instance, um, and then when it comes back, it's going to come back with a vengeance, which is why you see girls are using hotter and hotter and hotter mm. heat packs I mean, I've seen time. women having showing Facebook photos of these stomachs being completely blanche read because they are so hot. So we've got in our books um, a lady, Corinne Humphreys, um, and she's written testimonials that are available online. And Corinne um, is a naturopath um, who works in the pharmaceutical sector. Okay. So she did a lot of clinical work and hours and hours sitting at benches and she used to sit with a hottie on her tummy all day just so she could get through her work. I've seen it so bad we had one woman come in who had a layer that thick of wow. cooked tissue across her tummy and it was dark burgundy, wow. permanently dark mm. burgundy just mm. from mm. burning it. Mm. Unfortunately, your mum told you, yeah. um, your doctor often tells you yeah. and none of them think about or know about the ongoing ramifications to the fascia. Mm. Well, because I never considered it. I mean, to me, it was okay. This is relief. I'm going to use it. Um, you know, and another thing that's often recommended is castor oil packs. Yep. So basically, putting castor oil on and then applying heat, so mm. that allows the castor oil to get seeped into to the area. What are your thoughts on those? Okay. So oils have a lot of properties that um, can assist mm. the body. It's the heat is the problem. The heat, um, for example, you can go and use a mineral pool and that might be helpful to you. But you need to stay under about, well, you've got to stay well under 40 degrees. So 38, you know, just warm. Mm -hmm. Spa pools, how many women use spa mm -hmm. pools? And mm -hmm. they get in the, oh, I have a soak and I feel so much better. Then the next day I get up and I've got this chronic ache. Yeah. Well, yeah, you did it to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, if you want to use castor oil packs, use them, but use a very low heat, yeah. if any heat at all. I mean, um, surely it's Body just... heat will absorb them. Um, mm. as you, I do aromatherapy as part yeah. of my normal work, um, and we use warm oil, but it's you know, 35 degrees mm. warm. Mm. It's no warmer than that, you yeah. know, just a little yeah. bit more than body temperature, um, because you want it to be absorbed quite quickly, and the oil, when it's heated, will be absorbed. But it just really keep away from heat. It's mm. it's absolutely the enemy. Mm. So you treat women with adhesions, and you know one of the key things you mentioned to me was do not apply heat at all during the treatment or ever again for that matter. Yep. Um, so when it comes to adhesions, that's where a lot of the woman's pain is coming from is from those adhesions. So by heating that and cooling that, you are you making those adhesions tighter? Yeah, harder, harder. and worse. You, and worse. Okay, so the body strips, you have two forms of collagen. One's a really flexible, soft one, and the other one's a really tough one. And as an injury ages, your body strips out the collagen. Um, it doesn't waste collagen, because collagen's a, a really expensive resource. So it's really careful with it. So if you keep cooking that over and over and over, it needs more to apply to what it sees as a bad injury. Um, the reason for telling you not to um, use heat, we guarantee all our work and have for nearly 20 years on no change, no charge. So if we don't get people well, mm. we'll give them back their money. Mm. So, And the one thing that we insist on is that they must not use heat 
during the treatment process. It's got to go. They can have pleasant, warm showers. But if you wouldn't put a five-year-old in the shower with you at that temperature, it's too hot for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, ladies, I hope you got the message. I will be updating a lot of my own content because I did not know this information. And I'm going to be sharing this video with heaps of women because I really want women to know that applying heat, using any kind of heat on the body is just not beneficial for endometriosis or at all for the body. So um, thank you so much, Chris, for nice sharing welcome. those insights with us. I hope it's all useful. It will be. And uh, we'll also put up a PDF along with this to give you a little bit more insight on this. And uh, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>